think we all right now. Amen. Well, that's good to be here. Wasn't that a beautiful song? She wrote that song. Isn't that beautiful? I tell you, I'm thankful for people that has uh, has talent, and um, and for her too. <laughs> Just kidding. Just kidding, Katie. Just kidding, Katie. I love you. Amen. And um, I I do appreciate her and the family. I tell you, I'm grateful for knowing Brother Mattoon. Met him several years ago at uh, Taylorsville, North Carolina. I already had uh, several of his books, and um, I, now I have nearly all of them. I'm not positive, but I um, appreciate him, appreciate his wife and his children, and uh, serving the Lord together in the church. Isn't that a blessing? tell you, you don't see a lot of that too much. I'll be honest with you, and um, I'm so grateful for the Lord letting our paths cross, and it, it was not an accident that um, our paths crossed. I'm glad there was one bigger than I that's in charge of all that, and uh, I appreciate, appreciate him and his family so much, and also it's good to have Brother Jim Dawson his wife and his mother and the other ones. I can't remember your names, but um, we're glad all of you are here. I appreciate, I appreciate Miss Dawson. Many years ago, uh, I met Brother Dawson. He came to our church and preached, and I, I didn't even know him. Leon Meyer recommended him to come to our church, and uh, Brother Dawson preached for us several times. And uh, he's in heaven now. But I'm glad there's coming a day when we all get to heaven. Hallelujah. <laughs> I tell you, it's wonderful. And I'm glad I really get to go. I tell you, I'm glad it ain't a myth or make-believe. I'm glad it's real. And our heart that we will be part of that number one of these days. And I, I appreciate I appreciate the Dawsons. Brother Lauren Dawson uh, and uh, Miss Evelyn, would, we would see them, and they always made over uh, our oldest child, Paul, and um, Mr. Dawson called him his North Carolina buddy. That's, only, that's how he knew Paul. And um, I'm glad that my children got to meet some real men of God. They'll hear about them, and I'm glad my children to be able to say, uh, my daddy let me go over there where he was at, or my dad had him in the church. And uh, I tell you, that means a whole lot. It really does, and I appreciate them. They drove all the way from Pekins, Pekins, Illinois. Amen. Y'all know, anybody know what that's at around here? But anyway, I don't. I know it is around here, but I don't know about where it's at, but... But I'm glad to be here, and it's good to see them, and I appreciate them driving uh, tonight. Let's open our Bibles tonight to the book of John, uh, chapter number 4. I I've preached this message, um, matter of fact, a few years ago at the meeting where Brother Dawson and I see each other every year at Riverside Baptist Church in Durham, North Carolina. Our friend Brother Jimmy Jones is the pastor. And uh, they may have been there when I preached it. And uh, if they were, um, I apologize. Uh, but it's what I feel like God's put on my heart tonight. And um, I trust that you will help us as we... You know, I found out some things about preaching. I tell you, if you help the preacher, he'll preach a lot better. Amen. It's okay. It doesn't disturb me a bit for you to say amen. I like it. It's okay if you want to raise your hand. I like it. As long as you're not asking to be dismissed, I like it. <laughs> Amen. Let's look in John chapter 4 tonight. And uh, I want to look at three verses. And uh, all these verses, as I mentioned the other night preaching uh, out of the book of First Peter, uh, those verses in First Peter also had a thread, seemed like kind of 
tied them together. And uh, here in John chapter 4, verse 6, verse 11, and verse 12, I have a theme that I seen uh, that it seems like that just kind of ties these verses together. Look in John chapter 4 and verse number 6 tonight. The Bible says, Now Jacob's well was there. Jesus therefore, being weird with his journey, sat thus on the well, and it was about the sixth hour. Look down in verse 11, if you will. The woman said unto him, Sir, Thou hast nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. From whence then hast thou that living water? Art thou greater than our father Jacob, which gave us the well, and drank thereof himself, and his children, and his cattle? It seems like in verses 6, verse 11, and verse 12, all of those verses make reference to Jacob's well. I want to use that tonight, and you pray for me that God will help me, and, and, um, and uh, hopefully uh, uh, you, you'll be able to follow me along. Uh, if you'll listen, you'll have no problem at all. Uh, maybe looking where I'm headed to. And uh, I believe that these verses will say something to our hearts tonight. I want to preach tonight on this subject, on investing in something that will last. Now here in our text we read about Jacob and how Jacob no doubt had dug that well. No doubt, my friend, there was a time when Jacob probably saw those uh, followers outside. No doubt he saw those shepherds coming by. No doubt, my friend, he saw people coming by. And no doubt God put in Jacob's heart that he would build a well or, or he would dig a well. No doubt I can imagine him uh, telling his family and uh, maybe saying something like, Family, I believe God has put in my heart to dig a well right here in this particular spot. And uh, no doubt, my friend, uh, his family no doubt was willing to work with him. Now, you need to realize that in digging this well, one writer said that this well is 10 foot wide and it's 100 feet deep and it's dug on solid rock. Now, no doubt in digging this well, they took great determination. They didn't have the well digging outfits that we have. No doubt, my friend, they, they had to dig with a chisel and no doubt had to dig with a pick. Or uh, maybe had to dig, maybe with a hammer. And no doubt, my friend, it took blood, sweat, and tears for them to build this well. Now, I said all of that to say this. I want to liken that well tonight, my friend, to this church. You say, well, how do you get all of that? Well, my friend, the church is built on a solid rock. Jesus said upon this rock, I'll build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Christ, the church, no doubt, is a solid investor. I was thinking some time ago in preparing this message, I got to thinking about there are all kinds of investors. You experience them here, we experience them in our church. There's what I call temporary investors. In other words, they just come by for the benefits. They're really not interested in the benefactor. They just want to know what the church can do for them. And they are temporary, no doubt temporary investors. 
But then I thought not only they're temporary investors, but they're what I call short-term investors. You know those that's just in and out. They'll go in and out here and go down the road. They'll go in and out there. And, and, uh, and, and uh, they, they're really not interested in building a work from God for God. Uh, these are what I call uh, short-term investors. But then, let me say, I thought about quick investors. Now, we have those come by our church. In other words, those that just need a quick fix. Bill come do. How am I doing? All right? Oh, Bill, oh, we need a little gas money. Or oh, we, we need some groceries. And, and, uh, and we could go on and on and on. They wasn't interested in building. They wasn't interested, my friend, in becoming active. They came by. I've had them to come by a number of times, and the reason they come by, they want to know if I'll marry them. And uh, they're, they're, if you don't marry them, then why, they're gone. So we have a lot of them to go, amen. But I'm telling you, they're, they're quick investors. But what the church needs tonight is, is not temporary investors. This church is not going to be built uh, on short-term investors. This church will not sustain what it's got to sustain with, with those quick investors. Uh, but, but here we find that, that Jacob and his family, they're investing in something, my friend, that will last. Amen. Amen. I want to say some things tonight. Now, uh, what I'm going to say by the way of introduction is in the white part of your Bible. You'll get that later on. You won't find it verse and chapter, but it is in the white part of the Bible. And uh, you have to use your spiritual imagination. Because, see, that well that Jacob dug, they didn't just go to sleep one night and say, Oh, God! Well, you dig a well. Now, Benny Hinn could have done that and maybe Joel Osteen or, or some of that other crowd, but, but not Jacob. Jacob, my friend, uh, my friend didn't go to bed and wake up the next morning and, and say, my, 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 there's a great big well out there. Lord, I thank you for doing that. Well, I know it didn't work like that, but I, I begin to think and use my imaginations about, about Jacob digging that well. Now, no doubt, my friend, it began with delightful thoughts. Uh, he, he may have told people around where he lived at what he had planned to do. Uh, he may have called CNN up. I don't know, the Bethlehem Gazette. I have no idea. But, but he may have, have said now on this particular morning, uh, uh, we're going to have groundbreaking. We're going to build us a whale right here. And no doubt, my friend, it began with the delightful thoughts. Uh, I can see them lined up now. Jacob, I'll help you. Hey, Jacob, you can depend on me. Hey, Jacob, if everybody else leaves this job, I'll not leave this job. And uh, you can count on me. I'll help you dig. Uh, I, I tell you, this whale that represents the church, it, it began, my friend, with delight. Delightful thoughts. It's always easy to get it started, isn't it? People get awfully excited about a new church uh, uh, or working in, in this church. But, but you got to realize and you got to keep remembering, and I'll get to the main part of the message in just a minute or two, but you got to realize that they're digging with a chisel and a hammer and they're digging in solid rock. And no doubt it began, no doubt, with delightful thoughts. But then after about 25 feet, those delightful thoughts probably turned into defeated thoughts. I hear him talking around the job site now. I don't know why in the world he had to dig a well right there. Why, there's one already down the road Oh, we could, we, matter of fact, uh, Jacob, we got too many whales anyway. <laughs> Why don't we just tap into one down the road? 
Why, we, it, 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 it's just awful. I'm telling you, we've been out here digging. Uh, my friend, for all these days we've dug 25 feet and now those delightful thoughts, no doubt, have, have to turn uh, uh, into defeated thoughts. Uh, can I say to you tonight that there are seasons when this church is going to go through a dry spell. Are you listening to me tonight, church? I'm telling you, and nothing is going to happen. Nobody is going to be saved. Nobody is going to join the church. Nobody is going to find their way around this altar. Nobody is going to uh, get on fire for God. I'm telling you, it, it, you're doing, it's during the dry times when, when people will leave the house of God I'm telling you, it's not easy to, to build the work of God. It takes a lot of blood, sweat, and tears. And after 25 feet digging in solid rock, those delightful thoughts have now turned, my friend, into, in, into, uh, into my friend, uh, let me say, defeated thoughts. And when they go through these dry sessions, I'll tell you what happened. They'll take their family and their children, and they'll go down the road where there's a better youth program. <laughs> oh, it's going to be tough, I think, tonight, but you, we need this. I'm telling you, don't look like we're doing anything around here. And those delightful thoughts, hey, Jacob, let me help you dig the well. Now, half that crowd ain't showing up at the workplace now. And uh, they, they've turned, uh, my friend, into defeated thoughts. But may I say, thirdly, after dug about 50 feet in solid rock, those uh, defeated thoughts have turned into disgruntled thoughts. They're just not contented at all. They begin to find fault. They make up all kinds of excuses. Why, they'll say, well, she gets all the recognition at that church. They, they never recognize me for anything. And I come here as much as they do. I'm telling you, my friend, those well diggers now, after 50 feet, have turned into disgruntled thoughts. I can hear them now in the background saying, I can't believe he hurt my feet. I just cannot believe it. Hey, hey, I got my feelings hurt. I tell you, you know that Katie girl that sung that? That's the song I always sing. I heard it when I first started pastoring my church. Brother Jim, I got sick of it, and finally I just went ahead and nailed it all down one Sunday. I heard it all the time. Well, that's my song. She sung my When I asked him, I said, did you write that song? <laughs> she said, no, I didn't write that song, but, but, but they know I sing it. Are you the only one to ever sing that song? Well, no, I don't guess I am. I, I told him, I said, just quit fussing about it then. I'll tell you, I, I, it's turned into disgruntled thoughts. I can hear them now. As one of them says, you won't believe what happened. Uh, there I was out there working, digging that well, and I tell you, I bruised my knuckles. I tell you right now, that place hurt me. I cannot believe it. And I don't know what in the world I'm going to do. Then I heard somebody else say, now you have to read this in the white part. How am I doing? I can hear somebody now saying, well, he got my hammer. I've used that hammer all the time. I've sat there in that pew the same place ever since I've been here. They knew where I sat at. And uh, now they, they, they've, uh, they've uh, got my seat. I, I've had folks, Miss, Miss Linda, to quit the choir because somebody stood where they used to stand at and sing in the choir. I thought for a minute how childish and, and uh, how, uh, how, how uh, uh, immature that is. I'm telling you, these delightful thoughts, after 50 feet, if I don't hurry up, we never will get that well dug, I'm telling you. 
after 50 feet. I'm trying to get somewhere for you to just hang in there with me. After 75 feet of those disgruntled thoughts now have turned into discouraged thoughts. You know how you can tell when folks get discouraged? They start thumbing through the song books while the preacher's up here preaching. Or now in the day we're living in, they're, they're, they're playing games probably on an iPhone or something. And what's so sad about it, mom and dad sitting right beside them watching them do it. You're welcome. Amen. And uh, what, what it all tells me, my friend, is they, they're just discouraged. I'm telling you. Then all of a sudden, they, they, they move to the back of the church. Now, if you sit at the back of the church, I have no problem with that. But I'm telling you, there, except for one back there at the back of the church, I have a problem with her a lot. And uh, she needs to be up here. She needs to hear everything I got to say. Because she ain't got no help all week long. I've sweated, I've snotted, I've, I've done everything in the world and they ain't helped her one bit, amen? But I'm telling you, they, they've turned into discouraged thoughts now. Start laying out on Wednesday night and uh, won't come halfway on Sunday night and you ask them, well, we sure did miss you. And you know what they're going to say? Well, preacher, I'm just discouraged. Way, way, way. I am just discouraged, preacher. Isn't it amazing that you can be discouraged and still go to Walmart? <laughs> am I doing good? Where's the treasure at around here? Raise your hand. Hallelujah. Hope I'm doing good for you anyway. Amen. Yes, sir. And uh, It's amazing, isn't it? Why, you can go out to eat discouraged, can't you? Amen. You can go out on a romantic night discouraged. You can do all those things discouraged, but isn't it, a, isn't it sad that you can go out to eat, you can go to Walmart, you can go shopping, you can go fellowshipping, but you just can't come to church discouraged. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I'm telling you how sad. I tell you, that's where you ought to be when you're discouraged. You ought to be in the house of God. That's where you're going to get some help out. Amen. I'm telling you, 75 feet, hey, they're digging on solid rock. And now it's turned into discouraged thoughts. Then after about 90 feet, see, they don't know when they're going to strike water. We do because we know the rest of the story. But after about 90 feet, those discouraged thoughts have turned into dreaded thoughts. I'm telling you, my friend, they say, well, uh, I dread to even go back over there and show up there at the work site. I, I, I don't know what in the world Jacob had in mind. I, I never thought it'd be this hard. Well, I want to tell you something, and I, I don't want to preach long, but look like I am. But, uh, I, I'm telling you, it, it's, a, it's a sad, sad commentary. My friend today, uh, my friend that, uh, that it seemed like that, that people think building a church is easy. Everything's going to go smooth. It don't work that way. Especially if you're building on a rock. Now you can do pretty good on sand. You, you, can, you can build them pretty fast on sand. But they ain't going to last on sand. Tell you, we got a lot of sandy churches, don't we? They don't believe in nothing. They fall for everything else. They have no convictions. They don't even know what Bible to preach out of. I'm telling you, it's a sad, sad day, but I'm telling you, after 90 feet, it's turned into, into dreaded thoughts. I tell you, I don't even know if I ever go back to that place again. Oh, I've had them tell me that. I used to be a little bit more compassionate than I am now. <laughs> and I'd say, oh, come on, please, come on back. And, and uh, I didn't got to the place now, hey, hey, if, if you don't want to come, don't come. He said, well, you try, I am trying to build a church. I've been trying to build one where I'm at over 32 years. Hadn't done very well at it. But I'm telling you, my friend, it's never easy. There's going to be some hard places anytime you're doing a work for God. 90 feet, 
it turned into dreaded thoughts. I tell you, they ain't doing nothing over there anyway. Then after 99 feet, some still quit. They probably say, well, I guess it was a mistake to start off with, Jacob. You didn't messed up, worked us all this time and 99 feet deep and we still have no water. 99 feet, 6 inches, still some walk off. But then about 99 feet, 11 inches, there's a man down in the very bottom of that well. He's got a hammer. He's probably got a chisel. He has chipped and chipped and chipped and chipped and chipped. But on that glad morning, he said, boy, that sounded a little different there. He said, I never heard it sound just like that before. And then all of a sudden, my friend, he, he hits it one or two more times and all of a sudden, you hear him cry out from the very depths of that well. He cry out, there's water in the well. There's water in the well. There's water in the well. I want to tell you, there's going to be seasons that you come by here at Lincoln Land Baptist Church. It's going to be dry. It's going to be hard. It's going to be aggravating. But you just keep a coming back. You just keep a hammering. You just keep a working. And one of these days, uh, I'm telling you, you'll shout from the rooftop, hey, there's water. There's water. There's water in the well. Churches have winter time. But I'm telling you, like the fall of the year, spring is coming. Just stay with it, my friends. And I said all of that to say the message. Some of you shaking your head. But I'm telling you, Jacob, number one, Jacob invested in a place where Jesus passed by. In chapter 4 and verse 6 said the Lord Jesus came by and uh, he sat thus on the well. I mean 2,000 years before Jesus ever got there. And no doubt, no doubt somebody said, I in heaven, Jacob, uh, are you sorry? Uh, are you sorry that you dug the well? No doubt Jacob would have said, it's been worth every mile. It's been worth every trial. It's been worth every heartache. Uh, and digging that well, yes, 2,000 years have passed, but it's been worth it because Jesus came by and Jesus said, thus on to that well. And by the way, if Jesus comes by here once a year, It'll be well worth keeping the well open. I'm kind of going out on a limb, but I'm not afraid to. If Jesus comes by, it will be at the church. You're welcome. But see, Jacob, I'm talking about investing in something that'll last. Jacob invested and the place where Jesus passed by. I'm grateful, my friends, for the time that He's come by our way. I'm grateful for the times that He's showed up at Midway Baptist Church. It was just the other Sunday night, and I'm telling you, before I know it, Brother Jim, God had broadsided us. I didn't see Him coming. I had no idea what was going to happen. Somebody got to singing. Somebody got to waving the hand. All of a sudden, somebody got jumping up. Somebody testified. Four long folks was around the altar weeping and begging for God. I'm telling you, it don't happen every week, but I'm glad, my friend, we can Keep the well open. You never know when Jesus is liable to come by. Amen. Jacob invested in a place where Jesus passed by. Number two, Jacob invested in a place where a satisfaction of thirst was found. Verse 13, Jesus answered and said unto her, uh, whosoever drinketh of this water, talking about 
the water in the well that Jacob dug. Shall thirst again. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst, but the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up and the everlasting life. And the woman said unto him, Sir, give me this water that I thirst not, neither come hither to drink. I'm telling you, Jacob, hey, 2,000 years before John chapter 4, Jacob invested in a place where satisfaction of thirst was found. No doubt, this woman had came to the well many times. No doubt there's always her coming and no doubt bringing, my friend, her water pot. And I said all that to say this. It's worth keeping this well open. Some of you today down at your workplace, you, you rubbed elbows with the devil all day long. No doubt you heard profanity that you did not care to hear. And no doubt you feel like that, that you've been fighting all day long with the Satan and all his demons. And then sometimes when you get that way and you come to the house of God, somebody get up there and sing a solo. Or maybe... Maybe we, you don't have a choir. We do. Maybe at your church the choir gets to singing. Right in the middle of all of that, something begins to move in your heart. And maybe somebody stood up. It, it could have been somebody just got a good case of the king happens. So preacher, I just got to say something. I like that. We like it at our place. I ag it on. I promote it. I like what Brother Steve Dagenhart said. If you get close to the water, I'm going to push you off in it. But Jacob invested in a place where satisfaction of thirst was found. I want to tell you, my friend, maybe a song or a message, uh, but then all of a sudden, uh, over, we're overwhelmed with God's presence, uh, and you sit there. You may not say it out loud, but you're saying it from your heart. There's water in the well. There's water in the well. It may seem like it, uh, my friend, dry out there, but this is a place of oasis. This is a place you can come my friend and get some help along the way I say bless his name I'm glad there's a day in my life uh, that my satisfaction of thirst was quenched when I got to the house of God Amen. hallelujah folks Jacob invested in a place where satisfaction of thirst was found another thing tonight Jacob invested in a place where the gospel was preached. I'll not read verse 10, verse 14, and uh, then uh, verse uh, 34, verse 42. It, it all gathers around uh, our Savior, and I'm grateful, my friend, that He's the one that we ought to exalt. You ought to hear Him or from Him in every service described hey can you imagine Jesus on that well just awaiting he's run his disciples off it do you good to realize that God don't have to have you to get his work done I'm telling you but Jesus there is sitting on the way can I just testify just quickly I remember when I started dating Diane and I can remember her carrying me to church and and because uh, I didn't want to go, and uh, I, she'd carry me to church, and and uh, and and I got where I liked it. Until one day, I came in church, and Jesus was sitting on the well. He turned my whole world upside down. 
I want to tell you, you may come in here, there are times you feel like that God cannot be reached. But I'm telling you, there are times that you'll come to this place and you'll feel the very presence of, of Almighty God. I'm telling you, it's worth, it's worth keeping the well open. Uh, who knows? You know that boy you've been praying for? You know that grandchildren that you want to see saved? You know that husband that you want to see born again? I tell you, it's worth keeping the well open. One of these Sundays, uh, they liable to walk in in the back door. They liable uh, to witness Jesus here on the well. They liable to be born again by the blessed Holy Ghost of God. And my friend, you'll be glad that you kept the well open. You'll be glad you didn't walk out. You'll be glad my friend that you was disappointed but you just kept right on coming I'm telling you Jacob invested in a place my friend where where the gospel is being preached thank God tonight you ought to be grateful that you got a preacher that preaches the gospel I, I, I don't have to say this I just sense it. Be good to you, preacher. Yeah. Shake your head, do something. I got to hear something. Be good to you, preacher. You'll never do too much for the man of God. Take care of his needs and, his, and um, God lays something on your heart. My friend, try your best to get all that done. I'm just trying to tell you that you ought to be grateful. Some of you, I hadn't called on you to pray. You can look up this way. Be good to the man of God. My church is good to me. I'm telling you they're good to me, Brother Jim. I don't ever have a need. Never. Miss Dawson, they take care of everything I'm telling you they would buy my groceries if I asked them to but I wouldn't they buy my cars they keep the upkeep on my car they pay for my house they buy me clothes they put gas in my vehicles they pay for my health insurance my life insurance my wife's insurance to give us a full one and on and on and on and on and it sure is quiet. But be good to the preacher. Since I've been at Midway Baptist Church, we've built or borrowed $1.7 million. And we don't owe a dime of it. And I'll tell you why. Because God's blessing them because they take care of me. It's the way it always works. Amen. So well he get what day go. He said, Well he gets he gets more money than I do. Well he deserves more money than you do. Well that's really going well, isn't it? But you ought to be glad that that uh, God has given your preacher the gospel. Let me just give you a little nugget. I read in a book the other day. It said Jesus didn't come to preach the gospel. He came that we might have a gospel to preach. I believe that's right, don't you? Because He come, we do have a gospel. Let me say, let me say hurriedly, I'll be done in five minutes. Notice number four tonight. Jacob invested in a place where sinners were transformed. The woman then left her ward apart and went her into the city and said unto me, Come see a man which told me all things that ever I did. Is not this the Christ? Hey, listen to this preacher now. What if Jacob happened to dug that well? What if this well wasn't here? Some of you got saved in this well. Some of you saw your family saved in this well. Some of you saw your children's uh, life turned around in this well. 
I'm telling you, Jacob invested in a place where sinners were transformed. I'll tell you, Jacob dug it, passed it on. 2,000 years later, a sinner was saved. My friend, it's worth all the labor that we put in it. It may be after we're gone. It may be a hundred years from now. But wouldn't it be glad? Wouldn't it be wonderful? My friend, because you kept the well open, somebody else came by after you've gone to heaven, find Christ here as their Savior, and be gloriously saved by the grace of God. I'm telling you, Jacob invested in a place where sinners were transformed. I'm about done. Jacob invested in a place where reconciliation took place. I'll not deal with it. There at the well, man met God. Isn't that amazing? Hey, by the way, uh, Jesus wasn't there to draw water. He was there to draw the woman. Amen. He invested in a place where reconciliation taking place where man and God met there on the well. Some of you tonight can remember that glorious day that you and God met. Maybe over here, maybe over there. You met here at the well. I'm telling you, my friend, not only the wells where man and God meets, but it's where man and man meet. See, all, all, all we're all even at the well. We're just sinners saved by the grace of God. Do you realize tonight that it was the well that brought us together? Isn't that wonderful tonight? It was the well that brought us together tonight. Then finally tonight, Jacob invested in a place where there were great dividends. He said in verse 12, Art thou greater than our father Jacob, which gave us the well, drink thereof himself and his children and his cattle. Jacob invested in a place where there was great dividends. Think about all the people that came by and drank from that well. I, I don't know if what I'm saying is so or not. But, but I like the way it sounds. I can just visualize that Samaritan woman in heaven. And finally one day she, she finds Jacob. She said, Jacob, you don't know me. But you remember that well you dug, Jacob. And Jacob said, yeah, I remember that well in she said, thanks so much for digging that well because that's where I met the Lord at. Was at that well. I hope, I hope in heaven, I hope in heaven, I hope in heaven. The sorry jobs I've done down here, but I hope in heaven that somebody will find me. jerk on my coattail and say brother Charles you don't remember me do you remember that whale and so and so you remember that church so and so you didn't even realize that I came by that Sunday and I quietly gave Jesus Christ to my heart and brother Charles I'd like to thank you for keeping that whale open there's going to be some folks in heaven no doubt going to see Brother Mattoon. You say, Brother Mattoon, thanks for your labor. Thanks for not throwing in the towel. Thanks for not giving up. Thanks for keeping the well open. I ask you tonight, and I'm done, are you interested in keeping the well open tonight? Sometimes I don't know how to give invitations. I'm not very good at it. But no doubt, if we could open our eyes really wide and look around this altar tonight, you'd probably see a chisel 
laying over here. Somebody gave up in Sunday school. Somebody gave up on the family. Gave up on church. That was a chisel. If you look real careful, you'll find a hammer over here. Somebody's and laid a hammer down. Maybe, maybe here's a bucket over here with a rope tied to the bucket. No doubt one time that bucket was used to go down in that well to get all the dirt and grime out of that well. But I want to tell you tonight what we need this church and what we need in our church and every church. We, we need some people that have picked the chisels up. Pick the hammers up. Pick the ropes up. Don't get the attitude, if I can't have a hammer, I'll not do anything. If I can't go down all the way down in there, uh, I'm not going to do anything. God needs all kinds of folks. He needs some rope pullers. You know what that means? He needs some encouragers. He needs somebody to go by the pastor and go by the Sunday school teachers. Encourage them. This is not a good term, but I like it. He could use some cheerleaders also. He could use somebody to come by and encourage your heart. He could use you tonight to come by and encourage somebody else's heart tonight. I'm not talking to the wind. Just as sure as my name is what it is. God put this in my heart tonight. And no doubt there are some people that's in this church. You may not come, but you know you need to. You need to get around this altar. Find that hammer and that chisel. That one doesn't give up and that one just didn't, then left the church. And that one just got mad. Instead of just whining about it, you ought to get around the altar tonight. Pick up a chisel and a hammer. And get to work for the glory of God. Are you interested tonight in keeping the well open? Let's stand our feet tonight. <laughs> While your heads are bowed, our Father, we thank you tonight. Lord, I hope I didn't preach too long. Oh, God, I wanted to help these folks, Lord. I need help myself along the way. And God, I know there are folks tonight here that it's been tough, it's been hard. Maybe here lately in their own life, they ain't struck no water. Maybe things ain't turned out real good in their own life. But God help them, Lord, tonight that they would, oh Lord, get around this altar. Oh, God, tonight, leave this place tonight with a greater desire, God, to serve you. Lord, we'll praise you tonight for what you do in Jesus' name.